the crisis in Berlin or the first Berlin crisis was that significant turning point event that essentially dissolved the Grand Alliance and that precipitated the partitioning of Europe into two competing superpower blocks. So on the Western side, the United States supported uh, liberal democracies. The Soviet Union increasingly simulated Eastern European states as communist satellites, the so-called Eastern uh, Bloc. So obviously with history, uh, a turning point event is uh, a significant happening that sends the world on a different trajectory. In this case, the first Berlin crisis is commonly seen as the catalyst or the beginning of the Cold War. Now, the events in some ways started during the London Conference where the United States and Britain began the process of uh, planning for the reintegration of the western zones of Germany. Now, France had been given a zone as well. Initially, they weren't on board with that, but ultimately, uh, they did join uh, the western efforts. Uh, to reintegrate Germany into uh, Western Europe. Now, the beginning of this process to signal uh, that the United States was getting ready uh, to reintegrate the Western zones, regardless of any agreement reached with the Soviet Union, was the introduction of a new currency for occupied West Germany. So instead of the Reichsmark, they were going to introduce a new currency called the Deutsche Mark, or German uh, Mark. Now the reason for that was very simple. The Soviet Union had captured Berlin and taken possession of the old printing plates for the Reichsmark. And they availed themselves with this opportunity to essentially print currency to pay for their occupation of Eastern Germany. This caused inflation, which of course made the cost of the Western uh, occupation all that more higher. So a, a clear signal that the United States was going to break the Potsdam arrangement and uh, was putting into place the foundation of a unilateral settlement was the introduction of the Deutschmark. When this was announced on the 21st of June of 1948, Stalin knew what it meant. He had spies in the British delegation, and he responded to the imminent uh, unification of West Germany by uh, essentially intervening in terms of a blockade of Western Berlin. Western Berlin was deeply inside East Germany, so in other words, inside the Soviet zone of Germany. According to uh, you know, the Yalta Agreement, the western parts of the city had been separated into three western sectors for the United States, Britain, and France. But by establishing a blockade, not only of the rail, but also the land access, even the water access, uh, essentially what Stalin was doing was uh, holding the West hostage trying to get them back to the negotiating table to prevent the worst possible scenario for him, which was the reintegration of Western Germany into the Western Bloc. He understood that the Western zones of Germany was not only 66% of the territory, but even a larger percentage of its population and industrial potential. So in other words, uh, if West Germany would join the West, although it would definitely be smaller because uh, you know, the Soviet Union controlled East Germany, uh, it would retain a significant amount of industrial and uh, also military potential. So Stalin was eager to prevent this from happening, uh, and he held West Berlin hostage to force uh, the West to the bargaining table, where he was prepared to offer what we sometimes call Finlandization, 
or the uh, restoration of German sovereignty with the condition that it would be neutral uh, in the, the Cold War. Now, in addition to these blockades, uh, the Soviet Union also cut off electricity and coal and gas so that they were rapidly going to bring, you know, essentially a million people to uh, starvation. This was uh, leverage that he was going to use to forestall Marshall's effort to reintegrate the western sections of Germany. Now, the blockade was, uh, in a way, uh, not only a violation of the Potsdam uh, Protocol, uh, but it was a very uh, dangerous uh, moment. Uh, this was, in essence, Stalin throwing down the gauntlet. Uh, from his calculation, either the West would have to get out of uh, West Berlin and surrender it to him, or it would force them back to the bargaining table in which he would prevent West Germany from slipping into the Western alliance. What he did not anticipate is what Truman actually did, which was to try to supply the city by air. Now, the reason why uh, Stalin did not anticipate that is because Truman and all the Western leaders were not certain that this would work. In fact, there was considerable evidence that this wouldn't work. It had never been done on this scale when Germany had tried to do this in Stalingrad for a much smaller amount of troops. It hadn't really uh, worked. But the Americans and the British began the process of supplying by air, and eventually they kind of resolved the logistics. They created the tunnel ladder where essentially these planes were flying back to back. You know, even as they're landing on the airfield, they would start to unload and uh, you know, forklifts would drive up onto the, the plane before it even come to a complete stall, uh, stop. And they'd haul the goods out and park it on the, you know, the tarmac. So when they eventually put all three airfields into commission, they uh, marshaled the planes and began the supplies, eventually they got to the point where they were able to sustain the city, to bring in enough food, medicine, and coal to essentially keep the city uh, alive. When Stalin realized that this was going to work, uh, or at least his, his uh, air commanders, they started to intervene uh, with uh, the air lift, and particular Soviet fighters would buzz the bombers, kind of like they're doing now, you know, uh, in the, the kind of the second uh, Cold War. Now, in order to send Stalin a very strong message about that, uh, Truman deployed the B-52s to London. Uh, this was the delivery platform for America's nuclear weapons. So this sent a very clear message that Stalin better behave because uh, if he did not, uh, you know, just a you know, subtle reminder, we've got the nuclear bomb and you do uh, not. Now, Stalin eventually ordered his air commanders to stop buzzing American bombers. Uh, he realized that this was dangerous. He was going to bring the world to a world war, a world war he didn't want. He didn't think he could win, and he didn't have uh, nuclear uh, weapons. But now he was, in a sense, caught in his own trap uh, because the Americans were resupplying uh, West Berlin and they were winning the propaganda war. Now, to understand the significance and the legacy of the airlift, we have to look at it from different perspectives. Uh, for West Berliners, the American and British pilots were, were savers. Uh, you know, Stalin had held them hostage and they were bringing them food to keep them uh, alive. And for West Germany in general, uh, the American actions in West Berlin, particularly the airlift, solidified a deep partnership, uh, a solidarity that would eventually become the foundation stone of the NATO alliance, particularly the military aspect, where a combination of American uh, forces and the Bundeswehr was the uh, essentially the bastion defending Western Europe from the, the Red Army. Uh, for West Europeans, too, this sent an important message that their security was threatened by the Soviet Union and ultimately dependent on an American security 
guarantee. Without the United States, they would be vulnerable to Soviet uh, aggression. For uh, communists, particularly communists in the West, communists, for instance, in France and Italy and Britain, uh, the Berlin Airlift uh, really made their earlier sympathies for the Soviet Union a little bit impalatable. Stalin was showing the darker face of communism, its tyrannical aspect, its imperial aspect, and they found it difficult to stomach. So this created really a divorce between uh, essentially Western communism or Marxism, Marxist humanism, from Soviet-style communism, which they increasingly saw as an aberration, a violation of Marxism. And for the Americans, too, the Berlin Airlift was significant. It was significant because the Americans were very reluctant to re uh, establish a standing army and to become involved in international affairs. But the Berlin Airlift, you know, this was uh, a good news story. You know, here are American pilots giving chocolate to German kids, being saviors. It was showing the positive aspects of American power and that, you know, American power to do good was necessary and important for maintaining freedom throughout the world. So in a way, the, the Berlin Airlift uh, sold the idea of America waging a Cold War and that this was somehow consistent with American identity, American foreign policy, and the myth of American exceptionalism, that somehow the United States had a God-given role to spread freedom around the world. So the Berlin uh, you know, airlift and uh, eventually created so much pressure uh, on Stalin uh, that uh, you know, he had no choice but to uh, back away. He used the pretense of a diplomatic meeting uh, to call off his blockade. When the West showed up, he didn't have anything really to offer them, so they simply walked away from the process but he didn't resume uh, the blockade. Essentially, what happened is that the Berlin crisis marked the final dissolution of the Grand Alliance, and increasingly, East and West went uh, their own way. And an Iron Curtain, as uh, you know, Churchill colorfully said, separated the two sides of Europe. So having charted you know, the origins of the Cold War from 1941 to 1949, highlighting various chapters like the Tehran Conference, the Yalta Conference, uh, the Berlin Crisis, uh, the Marshall Plan, uh, you know, what event do you think was most significant in uh, spurring the breaking of the Grand Alliance? And who do you think was most responsible for starting the Cold War? Was it the Soviet Union uh, in uh, various ways, not you know, agreeing to uh, a grand settlement, uh, particularly during the Moscow Conference of 1947, sending Marshall on a unilateral uh, track? Uh, was it the, you know, the aggression of the Berlin crisis? Or was it really the United States uh, which didn't try to find a common ground with the Soviet Union, despite its heavy sacrifices. Uh, what if the United States at Yalta had at least met Stalin halfway and had you know, promised him at least some consideration of uh, aid? After all, the United States was economically very powerful, as hegemonic. They could have easily afforded to give the Soviet Union five billion in loans and to facilitate their reconstruction. This might have, you know, placated uh, Stalin and prevented him from trying to seek reparations from Germany or Eastern uh, Europe. Now, ultimately, these type of uh, questions, this type of post-factual history, is impossible uh, to verify. But going through some of these scenarios is important to understand uh, the way that history played out and the likelihood of you know, some of these uh, scenarios.